against Texas A&M. So hard to beat a team three times in a row. Um, but so for the Tigers right now, they'd love nothing more than to completely sweep this series. Te Texas A&M, I think, could be a little shell-shocked right now. We're riding high, coming in with an 8-1 record, and they're behind the eighth ball here in this series. A strike to Harper to get things started, and that one bears in and hits Harper. She didn't look like she wanted to take first base. She was still standing there. Chafin oh, they said it hit the bat, I think. Yeah, Chafin looked a little confused. What what happens here? It's Everyone looks confused. That replay looked like it didn't hit the bat nor the batter. So did Bergeron just miss it? I, I don't think it hit the bat, and I don't think it hit the batter. Well, they've ruled it a strike. They've ruled it a foul ball. And so it's 0-2. Nobody's challenging anything, so. Chafin, I would think, it, it's, I qualify her as a little bit of a streaky pitcher. She's had some awfully good games for the Tigers. One uh, out away from a perfect game against Alabama a couple years ago. The one two downstairs a bit. Harper is three for five in the series. The hits have been singles. Been a rough ser series for the Aggies. The two two pitch. Up and out a little bit, and after two strikes, Chafin has missed three times. And I think that's what you were alluding to, that uh, she gets herself in trouble sometimes with, with walks. The payoff pitch to the opening batter. Steve, right three called. Good pitch by Chafin, too, way too close to take. Might have been a little low. That might be why she took it, but. That's see, got when the that, very bottom yeah, border of the strike zone. When you see it from the side, different view. Here's Jasmine Hill. It's a strike heck, of one a, heck of a pitch. Hill is two for five in the series. LSU pitching has held Texas A&M to a 245 team batting average in these two games. Yeah, On the eight. other hand, the Tigers are only hitting 204 in the first two games, oh. but they've managed to beat Texas A&M, the best collection of outfielders in the SEC. They can cover some grounds. They're not afraid to lose, to leave their feet. We've had some highlight catches in, in this series, highlighted by Allie Newland's catch in left field. And then the two-time Gold Glove winner in center. did not had that much action, though. Kramer Este is three for five. Yeah. She hit eighth in the first two games. She's been moved to third in the order in this game. She's definitely the hottest Aggie right now. Este started her career as a raging Cajun at UL. The 0-2. That rises high. The one-two pitch. Slash oh, hello, foul. Aggies. Look out. We've got another very, very fine day. The wind is blowing essentially from right to left, sometimes in a little bit. 10 miles an hour at least. No chance of rain. 78 degrees right now and, and partly cloudy skies. Swing and a miss. Este went after an elevated pit. Yeah, the Tigers have seen her a lot. Curve, rise, drop, and change. She came into this series with a 1.15 ERA. Best pitch is that uh, curveball. She'll throw her highest pitches at 70 miles an hour. That changeup comes in at 57. 
Newland lifts it into shallow center field. And Jasmine Hill is out there. Well, Cottrell is catching. Kennedy threw very well the first night. She was kind of a hard luck loser. Last night came in relief and had trouble finding the strike zone for a while. You see her work in this series. Seven and a third really nice innings in game one. And came in in relief yesterday and had some difficulty. Put in a tough situation, bases loaded. And she was having trouble finding the strike zone. Definitely the workhorse for the Aggies. She is a very quality SEC pitcher. Briggs at the plate. She's two for six in the series. Nice drop ball there on the outside corner. That one just overmatched Briggs. That was a very good pitch. Well, Briggs is running through with the slap, and that ball comes in and drops. So two gone for Taylor Pleasance. The Aggies will remember her name after this series. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking if they have a choice, they're not going to pitch to her. She, you know, came in kind of, I guess you'd say, in a slump. She's only gotten two hits in this series, but they have been huge hits. A game-winning home run on Thursday night. And that was the game winner in the eighth inning in game one. And Lynn, we got us a great crowd out here. Don't be fooled by what you see behind home plate. The stands and the berm are completely full. Pleasance chops it right back to Kennedy. It's a one, two, three inning. So both started and they are eight and three in SEC play. Beth Tarina, the pitching coach, calls all the pitches and directs traffic at third. Cottrell lifts this one out to Briggs, whose parents are here from California. And Briggs, the sure-handed one in center field, makes the play. There they well, are right there. Yeah, that's them. Her dad had a birthday a couple of days ago. He did. Did they walk in with some peeps? I thought I saw some giant peeps in their hands. I'm not sure. Well, Chafin has thrown 14 pitches a bet. And 10 of them have been for strikes. And how about Kennedy? 10 pitches, nine strikes. Both starting pitchers have come out and engulfed the plate. Gotta love that. Give your team a chance when you're throwing strikes. The 1 0 to Woolley. Another one there for a strike. Not only are they throwing strikes, they are all about location, location, location. So far, no fat pitches. No mistakes. Please don't say fat. <laughs> as I'm looking at the uh, <laughs> wad of brownies that one of your fans brought up before the game. The Aggies have not had an extra base hit this series. All 13 of their hits have been singles. And really that's the difference in the game. The Tigers have not hit the ball well as a team in this series, but the hits they've gotten have been extra bases and of course that walk-off game-winning home run by Pleasance. And prime time hitting, meaning that they're getting base hits with runners in scoring position, which the Aggies had come in doing so well. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That's gonna be a base hit. Yep, even for Pleasance. Woolley has too much speed and once that ball Hopped off the hard infield. It was easily a single for Woolley. And look at the height of this hop, though. Get to wait on that. That was almost like a pop up. And that's single number 14 for Texas A&M in this series. All of their hits have been one base blows. Here's Enright. Came in hitting double the home runs that the Tigers have hit and haven't hit one yet. 
Enright was batting well over 400 with some nice power numbers coming into the series, but she has yet to get a base hit. Enright is 0 for 7 with four strikeouts. Woolley is the best stolen base threat for the Aggies. She's 14 of 16 on the base pass this year. Bergeron has done a magnificent job. A little fake there. Well, Bergeron has been challenged eight times, and remarkably, she's thrown out five runners. You, that is a really good number, one you don't see too much. I was going to say she stopped the running game. Two balls and a strike to Allie Enright. LSU catchers have only been challenged 10 times and they have five stolen, five uh, runners thrown out. But all five of them have been by Bergeron. The 3 1 pitch. That's high. And Chafin, whose walks to innings pitch number is a little bit high, walks in right and pushes Woolley to second base. This brings on Wiggins. This young lady has been a veteran. She has started for years and years. A senior from Wiley, Texas. 204 starts for Wiggins in her career. Boy, that's a great luxury for a coach, isn't it? Absolutely. Sort of like these eight seniors for LSU. That name just gets penciled in there without even thinking in that lineup. Wiggins is one for six in the series. Chafin struggling just a little bit. Texas A&M 0 for 3 in the first game with runners in scoring position. Only 1 for 8 yesterday. They've left 17. And they're 0 for 6 in this series. Kind of the tail with the of bases the tape. Loaded. Tail of the tape. They struck out three straight times with the bases loaded. That's a nice breaking pitch for a strike. Change up there by Chafin. And it had a little dart to it at the end. Well done. Throwing that change up off her curveball, her predominant pitch. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Lifted foul out of play on the left side. LSU's women's basketball team has just defeated UCLA 78 to 69. And it actually was the largest margin of the lead at the end of the game. This was a very tight one and two possession game for nearly 40 minutes. But LSU advances with a victory over UCLA. Congrats Tigers. Good game. One out, two aboard. A 3-2 count to Wiggins. Trinity Cannon is on deck. That's high and away. That was not a competitive pitch. And Chafin has walked two after a one out infield single by Woolley. Here comes Beth Tarina, and you kind of nailed it, Lynn. If, if she has any problems, it's this. It's kind of. Well, she's, she's got good stuff. She's she, got she a does. wide assortment of pitches, and they have a lot of movement and no trouble getting control. But Woolley got that chop infield hit to the left side. She has walked in right and walked Wiggins. The bases are loaded with one out. Here's Trinity Cannon. Steve, right? And Trinity Cannon is 0 for 5 in this series. But a 314 hitter, and she's dangerous with 10 home runs. 32 driven in. Strike two. <laughs> K 
Cannon lays off the letter high pitch. And there's a call third strike. It got a little piece of the outside. On the, on the outside corner, nip that corner for the strikeout. Still work to be done with two outs on the bases loaded. Kennedy Powell takes a strike. Powell is two for five in the series. It's the first time she's come to the plate this year with the bases loaded. The 0 1 rammed fair down the line and right. One Aggie scores. A second Aggie scores. Here comes a third Aggie. The throw to the plate is late, and that is a bases clearing triple for Kennedy Powell at the bottom of the order. That ball hit right on the line. Ag Aggies finally get their first extra base hit of this series. Comes at a big time with the bases loaded. They've been waiting for that in these all three games. And interestingly enough, when you look at the whole season, that's the first triple that LSU has allowed. That, wow, what a stat. Randy Dandy, of course he found it for us. Harper is hit by a pitch. And it's been the gifts by Chapin yes. in this inning that have hurt her. Absolutely. And you see that ball is, Powell is like, I will definitely swing at that pitch. Too much white. So the Aggies, for the first time, yep. have a more than one run lead, and Chapin is going to be lifted here. Well, it all came in apart and the allowed 10 fewer hits than innings pitched this year. She's the drop ball queen. Burzon went eight innings for the victory in game one. She pitched an inning and a third in relief yesterday and picked up the victory in relief. She's 12 and one on the year. Runners on the corners. The first extra base hit in this series for Texas A&M has resulted in a three run lead, the three run triple by Kennedy Powell. Triples are by far the rarest of the base hits in softball. But that's how you get them right down the line. And LSU outfielders can run, but so can the Aggie hitter. Let's see if we have a first and third steal here with two outs. I think Bergeron will try to throw her out at second if that happens. Aggies are not running. That's high, it's three and one. Jasmine Hill popped up to second base last time. And now Burzon misses and the bases are loaded again. Well, three walks and a hit batter in the inning. Here's Eshte. She's the ninth hitter to come to the plate for the Aggies. There's a strike. LSU in all three games has trailed early. They have rallied in the first two games. Walks killed the Aggies last night. And they're really hurting the Tigers today. Walks are very non-prejudicial, aren't they? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I've never heard it described that way. The 0-2 upstairs. I think it's this brownie. It was good. See, Lynn, when you're nice to people, this is what happens. You're right. 
The one two pitch. Swing and a miss. Spurs on. Gets that pitch to sink at the end. <laughs> Here's Gutierrez. Lynch and Petty will follow against Emily Kennedy. Kennedy is pitching for the third straight game. She started game one. Boy, she, she pitched in relief yesterday, and she is starting game three. She would really like a win. She indeed would, and she's very capable. Like I thought she got her on an inside curveball and a backdoor curve. Gutierrez is 0 for 4 in the series. She chokes up a little bit off the end of the bat, reaches for that and rolls it slowly toward the second baseman, and Wiggins turns it into an out. That's a victory for Kennedy as she got Gutierrez to on lunge. a bit of an awkward swing. Yeah, kind of just lunged at it. Lynn, I just can't get over this crowd. It is packed. Good for women's sports. Indeed. Good for any sports. And they say they wouldn't be interested. Well, it's such a pleasant place, Tiger Park. Every seat is an exceptional sight line. It's a fun park. You got the berm out there. You got the stands and you got the fans up close and personal. And I love the greenery beyond the outfield area. The palm trees. They finally coming back. Interspersed with uh, cypress trees, which are gorgeous this time of year. That oncoming of the light green and a give little it, tint of yellow. Give it a couple of more weeks and all those crepe myrtles will be blooming. But those palm trees, we had a, a brutal span of winter that kind of affected the palm trees. Lynch lines one with authority, but right at Hill in center field. She didn't have to move much. Can't hit it any better, Lynch. Five in a row retired by Kennedy to get things started, and this is Carly Petty. Carly Petty doesn't have a hit in this series, which is hard to believe. Oh, for four. Well, the Tigers' bats have been really silenced most of the time in this series. LSU came in hitting 204 in the first two games. She does have two walks because when you when we said 0 for four, no way. She just had four at bats in two games. 204 is the bad news for LSU offensively. The good news is the hits have come at the right time. Absolutely. And they've been able to get an extra base hit or two Got when her. necessary. I think this might be the second or third time she's gotten hit. Hit by pitch. Carly Petty, number two in this series. Just nicked her. So it comes with two outs, and here is Mackenzie Ruderdy. Kennedy has hit 13 batters this year, so she's not afraid to throw inside. No, she's trying to, you know, jam, come inside with that backdoor curve, and just gets just a little too close sometimes. A strike to Rudity, who's two for five in the series. No Tiger player has more than two hits combined in the first two games. LSU was 10 for 49 at the plate in the first two games. That's chopped to Harper, an easy play for the first baseman. Very competitive game. The Tigers came out victorious, and now we shift to Fayetteville, Arkansas, where LSU and Arkansas are battling in baseball. It's 1-1 in the third. 3-0 Texas A&M over LSU here. Burrs on in relief. Man, life must be boring if you're not a sports fan, huh? Yeah, you're right. Here's Cottrell. Julia was the first batter in that productive second inning. 
and she fly to center. And then things came apart for Raylan Chafin. I'm a hawk into the parking lot. There's that great crowd we're talking about. I've got a question for you as we approach Easter. And I know growing up in Cajun territory, there were some games involving eggs Pake. at Easter. Pake? Pake. Kind of a knock-knock game, isn't it? Exactly. You take the two, you have a contest with boiled eggs, and you hold it in your, you know, your, your hand, and the other opponent comes and tries to you hit it on top of the egg. So they go point to point? Point to point. If your egg cracks, you're out of the game. You're lost. Last one standing. Did you ever win? Uh, yeah, and do you want to know what my brother did to me one time? I bet he gave you eggs that weren't cooked. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. It's tough being a little sister. Pake, that's a well-known tradition in Cajun country. And then later you would peel them and eat them, right? Oh, yep, and then or they would make potato salad with it. Yeah. Pake. But point to point, you're right. McKee makes a nice play going to her left at third base. Pake. Here's Coco Woolley. She has been moved down to fifth in the order. She runs up on a nice off-speed pitch. Tough to catch up with that pitch when you're running through it. Yeah, you're way ahead of the pitch, aren't you? Gutierrez covers a lot of ground at first base. And makes the play unassisted. Erzon inducing all the ground ball outs. So it makes her special. Now Enright, who walked and scored in the second inning. Not only does she have that good drop, look at that rise ball. That's a pitch that's under development for her, and uh, she is making really good progress with it. Well, it's tough. I mean, when you're all predominantly over the ball and leaning forward, kind of hard to throw a rise ball off of that. But it's great posture for a uh, drop ball. Petty from the backhand side on the money to Gutierrez, a three up, three down inning. Bergeron batting for the first time. There's been only one base runner in the first couple of innings against Emily Kennedy, and that was a two out plunk of Carly Petty. Now both teams have se seen both starting pitchers quite a lot now. Powell makes the pickup, and Bergeron is retired third to first. Nice charge by Powell, not waiting on that ball. No, she has to go get it. That's four ground ball outs. Two fly ball outs to center field. And one strikeout. Last pitch, 70 miles an hour. She's just so effortless. She don't realize she's throwing that fast that the velocity is up. Plus, she's a lefty. Ooh. McKee let it pass for a ball. Kennedy might like to raise a challenge on that. Here's the pitch. Ball four, I think. Or did he call a strike? Nobody. Wow. He called ball four. McKee 
either didn't hear it or thought maybe it was a strike and Kendi's kind of grimacing on the back of the circle. Yeah. It's Boy, that's a fat pitch, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the, she's getting, you hate to say the word, squeezed. I mean, the, once again, that strike zone, postage stamp. Here's Newland with McKee at first base. The Tigers need all the base runners they can muster. He does not like that that corner. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Texas A&M has a three nothing lead in the bottom of the third. Allie Newland fly to center field to open the game. Runner is on the move. The peg is high, and the slide is under the tag as Maddox McKee, who is one of the fastest Tigers, is able to take second base. And Wooly made a great effort there to get her. Throw is high. She comes across. But McKee can run. That's her first stolen base. She's only tried it twice. I think she must add a little dancing or gymnastics in her younger life to hang on to the base like that. A weak pop up to the right side is gathered by Amari Harper. And Newland is out on a pop up to first base. This brings on Briggs, who struck out in the first. She has a six game hitting streak, which is the longest current streak of any Tiger. Likes it low. Rudity and Bergeron both have three game hitting streaks. And those are the only hitting streaks for LSU. And that's at the bottom of the lineup. Got some chirping from the Texas A&M dugout. Sometimes you just got to let it out. Here's the 0-2. That spins off the plate a little bit. Briggs with a nice take. You just have a millisecond to make up your mind and recognize that pitch. Otherwise, it can make you look foolish. Halfway uh, to the plate. That's trouble. That's a base hit. Don't. There is no play anywhere. First and third. Briggs on the chop in front of the plate. Extends her hitting streak to seven. And the Tigers bring the tying run to the plate in Taylor Pleasance. She is so good with that, as you say, chop. Look at that. I mean, that's a base hit. There's nothing Kennedy can do. It's, she's athletic. She got to it as fast as she could. Pleasance has been a bone in the throat of the Aggies in two games. Let's see if she can tie it with one swing, two outs. Nope. Two here, on. Here comes. Coach Ford, and I don't blame her. McKee returns to third base. Briggs goes back to first. The 1 0. Little low. Off the mark, 2 0. There's lightning on the base pass. 71 miles an hour. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Off speed, the runner Going is on the, the move. Out. This is close, and she's thrown out. She is thrown out to end the inning. And they're going to ask for... Now first base is open. Will they walk Pleasance with a 3-0 count? I would. That's right down Main Street for a strike. I mean, this obstruction call to me is like... We're playing flag football instead of a real football game. 
Let's see what they feed Pleasants. Off oh, the yeah. plate. They definitely walked her there. That was an intentional, a semi-intentional, intentional pass. Oh, how the complexion of this game could change on one swing. Oh, there's a ball in left field. I think he came out of the bullpen. Now that's a wild pitch. Well, you got that concrete wall over there. So if you uh, if you do hurl a wild pitch and it rebounds off that wall, it's going in the, the outfield. Gutierrez lays off the elevated pitch. She rolled out weakly to the right side to Wiggins, the second baseman last time. And this is when Kennedy has kind of crumbled a little bit. Let's see if she can rise to the occasion here. She's pitched well. She's had some breaks go against her. No, no doubt about that. The pitch rammed into center field just beyond the diving Wiggins. One Tiger scores, two Tigers score. Raylene Gutierrez delivers a single to center and we've got a one run ball game. Well, that's the beauty of Gutierrez. She's, you know, you walk Pleasance to get to her. The most improved Tiger on this team from last year. And oh, how big is that obstruction call against Texas A&M? Here's Lynch. Stee, right. Kelly hit the ball very hard last time, lining out to center field. A chop to the left side. Powell makes the throw, and there's the third out. But Gutierrez with a clutch two out. Right now. Well, that was one of the That's finest catches ever. Big time change up from Burzon here. Ryland Wiggins walked and scored in the second inning. She's one of the few players these days who does not wear batting gloves. You always pick that out. Can't ever say I really noticed that. She's had a solid season. Let's see if there's a play anywhere. Nope. Have you noticed, Lynn, that we don't ever have the pitching violation anymore? Right. Everybody's gotten used to it. Pitching violation with the time clock. 20 this seconds way. between pitches, just like college baseball. You know, they've shortened that in Major League Baseball this year. To they've what? gone, gone to, uh, to an 18. There's a 15 and an 18 now, depending on if there's people on base. Wow. Won't be able to tell any stories between pitches. I hadn't thought about it like that, but you're right. I mean, this is so totally different than a volleyball game or a basketball game because the action is just nonstop. The 2-2 two -two. slap foul. Burzon, always smiling, always laughing. It is definitely the MO of this team. Oh, a wicked off-speed pitch. And Wiggins was really reaching for it. Can't be no more pretty than that. It's about as good a changeup as you can throw. Not necessarily over the plate, but when it came out of her hands, it looked fat. You know, she left it short. Strikeout number two for Burzon in relief. Pleasance charges it, throws that strike right to the letters of Gutierrez at first base. Trinity Cannon is retired. Third 
Here's Kennedy Powell. She's been the hero of the day offensively for the Aggies. Gutierrez reading the hands, came charging in. Thought Powell was going to drag or. With lay the down bases a bunch. loaded last time, Powell cranked a triple down the right field line. This time she chops it to the left side, Ooh. and McKee airmails it all the way into the dugout. Happens. It happens. Just don't get a good grip sometimes. She is mortified down there. Yeah. When I was playing one time, I threw it in the other field. Wow. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> I don't think I've seen very many no, she sail just on a fly from third. That looked like a pop-up into the LSU dugout. Yeah, and she's probably thinking, get the cameras off of my face, please. Yeah, she had an... A really good hit last night for an RBI, and she's made some good plays, but happens. This brings on Harper at the top of the order. And in a one run game, the Tigers want to make sure that that errant throw does not come back to haunt them. It has put a runner in scoring position with two outs. Harper has struck out and been hit by a pitch. Three and oh. I wonder if somebody could have caught that ball in the dugout and quickly <laughs> thrown it back to Gutierrez at first base. Unless they had some kind of mini trampoline in there. I don't think anybody was going to be able to catch that. Maybe the person in the first row in the bleachers. There's a strike on the 3-0 count. LSU's baseball team has taken a 4-1 lead in the fourth inning against the Razorbacks in Fayetteville. Tigers 4. Arkansas won in the fourth. Arkansas has won the first two games of that series. And in case you missed it earlier, in a nail biter, LSU's women's basketball team in a very tight game was able to get a win over UCLA. It was a nail buyer came down to the last minute of the game. LSU extended the uh, winning margin by a few points, but it was basically a one and two possession game for 40 minutes. So the Tigers are in the Elite Eight in basketball. That's foul. Can possibly be no any more secrets between these two uh, pitching staffs. They have seen each other considerably in three games. The 3 2 pitch. Laced foul. And just one more quick update on the LSU women's basketball team. They will play the winner of Colorado and Iowa. And that game will certainly have national coverage. What time is that game? Wall. To date, right? Iowa and Colorado are playing right now. Right now. 3 2. A chance for Newland. She drifts to her right and she's got it. Harper is retired. And Which in softball you can do. Kennedy with that big sweeping curveball to the lefties. Of course, she is a lefty. I got a four letter word to describe Kennedy. Good. Hmm. I was weighed. I was holding my breath. One one to Petty. She was nipped by a pitch with two outs in the second inning. Twice. That's the second time in this series that she gets hit by a pitch. Two balls and a strike. To steady Carly Petty. Ooh. Whose dad is named Tom Petty. Carly has not been a heartbreaker, though. Mm. 
Been a sweetheart deal for the Tigers. A transfer from Oklahoma State, the fifth year senior. I find it interesting as I gaze out at Jasmine Hill, sometimes in center field, after Kennedy throws a strike, she'll take her glove off and, and, and clap out there. And she takes her glove off, so she's got the two-handed full clap going. She's into the game. Are you think she's mocking Blue or just really clapping well, I, I for her know, teammate? I don't know, but she only does it on strikes. She might be mocking Blue. Oh, what a bunt. Nice play by Kennedy. Nice play by Kennedy. Lefty's got to... Ruderty gets it down. Gets the sacrifice bunt. Beautifully done. And Ruderty has played well this series. Kennedy Hit with a little well. backhanded flip gets the out. And here is Bergeron, who is 0 for 1. She has a three game hitting streak. Bergeron is 2 for 6, make it 2 for. Seven now in the series after rain. grounding out in the third inning. The rain, Louisiana native. I bet you her relatives have grown up doing pake on Christmas. Christmas, Easter. Somebody might have pakeed my head. We'll see which one cracks first, right? <laughs> Bergeron. He's hitting 310 with runners in scoring position. LSU is two for four in this game. Change up that kind of just sits there. Kind of got away with a bad pitch there. But she has thrown some awfully good ones. One and two, one out. The tying runner at second base. Ooh, fooled her completely with that curveball that just kind of dropped off the table. That's what they call a back foot breaking pitch. And Bergeron could do nothing with it. Watch it bear in on her. That's really well done. Well delivered by Absolutely. Kennedy. Kennedy does work both sides of the plate. And now Maddox McKee. Just a junior, so she's got another year with the Aggies. McKee walked and scored in the third. She takes a strike to open it. One and one now. Carly Petty at second base with two outs. The Aggies have a three to two lead in the bottom of the fourth. Almost got her on that one. As we said, Kennedy is not afraid to come inside. Who should be afraid? The hitters are so geared up now. Newland is on deck. Three balls and two strikes on third baseman Maddox McKee, who got her chance when Coffee went down with a knee injury. It's a long run for Eshte, but she is able to grab it in foul ground. And so LSU leaves Petty at second base. Full game today. This on the Bark in the Park. Day. Jasmine Hill sends one to the hole. Pleasants cannot make the play on the outfield grass. I don't think she would have had any no. chance of getting Hill at first base, even with a clean pickup. Not even Taylor Pleasants, I think, is getting her in this. So that's hit number three for the Aggies, and Hill is aboard for the second time. She had walked earlier. She's one for two. Here's Kramer Eshte. Who's had a good series. Tigers are shading her to the left. 
I don't know for sure, but Eshte being a former Raging Cajun, she probably has played in this ballpark. Uh, she should have played last year in regionals. Gutierrez recovers and throws from her backside after stumbling and falling down. A rare, rare mishandle ball, but still gets the out. Senior didn't, didn't panic. Does a good job of not panicking and still getting the out. You know, when you're a freshman, all kind of things. Wind never stops blowing. You're right about that. The one time I was there, whew. NTM. Well, they got us in the deep freeze again here, Lynn. Nice play by Burzon, although she didn't really look at her. She was just kind of gave her a sideways glance. Enough Burzon, to hold her. Burzon holds Hill at second base. You see here, yeah, I guess she did turn her head and look at her. Here's Coco Woolley, the shortstop. She's one for two. Just enough to freeze her at second. Woolley takes a strike. She's a junior from LaPorte, Texas. Here comes Coach Ford. Might we have a pinch hitter or a pinch runner? I'm thinking pinch runner, if anything. Yep, pinch runner. And Haley Golden will take over at second base for Hill as a pinch runner. Got any SEC scores yet? I do. Missouri has shut out Villanova, obviously a non-conference game, 7-0. Arkansas has nipped Georgia three to two. Ooh. Florida came back from a three run deficit in the seventh inning and beat Mississippi State seven to six. Florida has been playing good ball. But Mississippi State, they can flat hit. They put up some runs on the scoreboard. The 0 2 bounces in. The runner's going to take it the, yeah, the base. That's going to be a wild it. pitch. Shows how good Bergeron's uh, arm is. She had no chance, but you know, rockets the ball down there. Alabama and Kentucky are tied in the seventh at three. Tennessee plays Auburn later today, and in the first inning, no score between South Carolina and Ole Miss. You are up to date in the SEC. Missouri a winner over Villanova. Arkansas by one over Georgia and Florida by one over Mississippi State. Those are the finals. Oh, ball in left field again. Nobody sees it. Briggs coming on, calling for it, and makes the catch. And she has been the workhorse for the Aggies. Allie Newland is first pitch swinging, and look out as she sends. Almost a took, laser over the head of her teammates in the dugout. Almost took out a couple of them there. <laughs> I think the cheer is this way, this way. That's spinning off the end of the bat. You've heard us talk about it before, but these dugouts here are one of the, uh, the longest dugouts in the country. Good camp in them. Got a bathroom, got a training room in there. The 0-2 is high. Newland has fly to center and popped up to first base. Held up on that swing, good thing. Not a hittable pitch.
A clean base hit to right center field, and Should Newland may double. try for two. There she goes. She makes it easily. Newland realized, leaving the batter's box, that this might get to the warning track and or the wall. It did, and she never hesitated. That is double number seven for Newland, and she represents the tying run. And Wiggins gave it the effort there. I thought maybe she was going to make an unbelievable catch, but just a shot by Newland. All out. This girl is always all out. Now Briggs, who chopped a base hit last time. Can do so much with that bat, can lay that bunt down, can chop. She's the, the master of that chop ball on the infield. Well, the choice now for the Tigers' brain trust is do we try to use three outs to score the runner from second, or do we squander an out or give up an out to get the runner to third? It looked like she was swinging away there. She had. We talked about this earlier. She had a home run midweek against Nichols and Thibodeau. She's been really good with runners in scoring position. Batting 441, and that pitch eludes Cottrell. I don't know if she was crossed up or what. With the with the bunt, sometimes you kind of get in the catcher's uh, eye level. It was a rise ball that just kind of. But this see. is a catchable pitch. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's not that she much just over. Kinda... They're going to rule it a wild pitch, I think, but that, that is a catchable one. I think the bunt attempt kind of messed with her, with her vision. So now LSU has the luxury of three outs with a runner at third. The 3 1 pitch slapped into the net. Not a time you would do it with nobody out and, you know, not a trailing runner at second, but Rep Tarina loves to squeeze but not a good time to do this. 3-2 pitch, popped up. Briggs was off balance. She yep. was running up was on change that. up and got her fooled. And it did fool her. She was unable to get a, any kind of authoritative swing. So one gone as Texas A&M fights off one batter with a runner at third. Here comes Coach Ford. A pop up by Briggs. A runner at third, one out. And once again, Pleasant's up. With, and if time to do damage. Ooh, she almost, Cottrell, Cottrell's glove almost came up trying to track that ball down. Pleasant's. Has some very good numbers in terms of success scoring runners from third base. She's had these opportunities 14 times this year, and she has an RBI on 10 of those. That's 71%, and that's really good. That's why she's hitting third in the lineup. Kennedy is working very, very carefully to Pleasance. Let's see what she does here on the 3 1. She went right at her. Three balls, two strikes, one out, a runner at third, a one run game. Pleasant drives the base on balls. Tried to come inside. Walk number three from. Aggie infield drawn in, trying to cut down the runner going to home. Gutierrez has had success with runners at third this year. She has scored a runner from third with less than two outs. We do have a nine out of 11 times. We do have a pinch runner at first. That's Savannah so Bedell. Pinch running. You've got speed on the corners. That's a really nice delivery by Kennedy for a strike. Oh, she's she throws some really good pitches.
The 2 1 pitch. High and away. 3 and 1. Kelly Lynch, the DP, is on deck. Gutierrez takes a strike on the inner half of the plate. A backdoor curve. Kennedy with no fear to throw that thing on a 3 no. 1 count. And it just has the lefties frozen. That's a foul ball. We've got a battle here. All three games have been this way. The score ended a little lopsided yesterday, but uh, it was a battle for six innings. What a changeup. Gutierrez is frozen by an off-speed pitch. And I think that's the most emotion we've seen from Kennedy in three games. This is a huge strikeout. It got a good portion of the plate, thigh high, and Gutierrez with a runner at third and a runner at first was unable to put it in play. Just frozen. Now Lynch. You gotta tip your cap to Kennedy. That was an awesome pitch. The Tigers had runners at third and first. I feel like Lynch just li lives for these moments here. Two Ooh. outs now. Cool cucumber. And a liner over the, oh. it's caught, it's caught, it's caught by Este. Este looked like she might not. Tigers missed a golden opportunity with a runner at third and nobody out. Last inning. And then had runners at first and third with one out, but yeah. did not push across any runs. We've got a pinch hitter. And it is Maya Perez. It's a backbreaker. Runner in third with nobody out. Well, I find it interesting here that Perez would pinch hit for Allie Enright. Enright, although she's had a great deal of difficulty in this series, is still hitting 386 without a base hit in the series with some good power numbers. Uh, Perez is able to get aboard. Perez, a 160 hitter, is walked. We'll have a pinch runner here. And that pinch runner is Enright. Enright returns as the starter and will undoubtedly stay in the game in right field. And this brings on Wiggins. Let's see if the sacrifice is in order. McKee at third base thinks so. Well, you would think that they want to pad that lead. And play station to station here, get this runner in scoring position. Yeah, that was a huge out there in that last inning. LSU got a runner 60 feet away with nobody out. An absolutely and left runners at first and third. And absolutely crushed the ball, but Este made a, a beautiful play. That's a changeup for a strike. Yeah, not, I don't know why you don't bunt that. It's a changeup. But she didn't like it. Burzon had to fight off McKee for that ball near yeah. the circle, but once, she made it, made the play nicely. Once again, you know, like with coffee being gone. Strike one on the outside edge. Burzon has fought off the Aggies since coming on in the second inning. But they scored three on the starter, Chapin. Burzon has thrown shutout softball since then. 
But the Tigers have not been able to overcome that lead. They trail by one. Hits have been really difficult Did to she find go? today. Yes. Only three hits for both teams. One ball, two strikes on the pinch hitter, Williams. Yep, definitely went. Burzon and Kennedy, they definitely deserve a, an extra piece of, well, they probably don't eat pie, but an extra, an extra cookie or something for the effort that they've exerted here in three games. Now it's a full count. Post-game meals have improved a bit since your yes. day, haven't they? Post-game meals, uh, fueling stations all over campus to make sure nobody goes hungry. Yeah, just a tad. Shoot, I remember those days at Burger King and it was like a $4 limit. That was pretty much my limit for dates most of the time. <laughs> That mean dollar you, menu. You mean you didn't have your briefcase full of snacks? No, with no, you? That, that dollar menu was uh, quite popular. Oh, this that's is a trouble. Hit. Safe at third on the tag attempt. Pleasance made the only decision she could, and she did it abruptly. Absolutely. That was the only play she had, and she absolutely was safe. You can see the slide. By Enright, easily beat the and Lynch the other. What are we pitcher. doing here? Oh, okay. We had an appeal on that call. It's Kennedy Powell who has tripled in three runs and reached on an error. And another chance to drive in some RBIs. She did have the. So far, she has the hit of the weekend for the Aggies. The infield is drawn in. You don't have to do it as pronounced as you do in baseball because of the smaller dimensions. What are you talking about, drawing them in? The infield, trying to cut that run down yes. at the plate. Yes. The 2-0 pitch, fouled away. on readies the new softball that pitch got there in a hurry but it was high three and one the top of the order is on deck in Amari Harper Burzon just a sophomore but since so much and ooh, look at here. That could have been trouble. Rudity was shifted over in right field. So shaded to the left side of the field. That ball ended up being way foul, but at first when it came off the bat, it looked like it had a chance. And Powell has peppered that line over there on the right field right field line once again the three two pitch with runners at third and first swing and a miss big strikeout that looked Burzon. like an off-speed pitch and it had Powell tied up well when you're running through as a slapper and you see a changeup, you're just so far ahead of that pitch it takes a little moxie to throw it doesn't it it does But that's just it. You got to believe in that pitch. There's another one. Oh. 
Three in the second for the Aggies, two in the third for the Tigers. And that's where we are in the sixth inning. Another one. Three change-ups in a row. That's when you're confident in that pitch. That's when your pitching coach is confident <laughs> with that pitch. Herzon's rise balls are waste pitches a lot of times. Two outs, two on. LSU trying to make this a one-run game or sustain it. Runner from first is away. She'll get the stolen base, and Bergeron wisely held the ball behind the plate. Boy, she, she I thought she was going to throw it because she doesn't like them running on her. No, it just was not a, well, a good ball, pitch, yeah, though, to, to, ball in the dirt. to she fire did, it to second. She absolutely did the right thing by putting it in the back pocket. That might have been ball four. But instead, the count is three and two. A one-run lead for Texas A&M. Not a lot of elbow room in that part of the stadium, is there? It's packed. It is packed. It's a tremendous crowd. Burzon brings the 3 2. Chop toward Petty. The out at first. The Tigers hold off the Aggies. Ella Bit of everything in this, this series. We've had some tremendous defensive plays, a walk off home run. Petty sends it up the middle. And she's going to go to second base on that throw. And that's Petty's by first Coco hit. By Coco Woolley. Petty's first hit of the series. Base hitting and an error on the throw. I would assume so. Sometimes you just got to. Really, Woolley had no chance. She no. did a tremendous job of getting to the ball behind second base. But should have just put it in her pocket. Good job by the people in the LSU's dugout to make sure they didn't touch that ball. They picked their legs up, went inside. Could have touched them. Like she'd have to stay on first base. And it is the first hit of the series for Petty. She's been on base all three times. She's been plopped. Yeah. She's walked, and she has a base set up the middle on the ground. This is the M.O. of this team. It's a gritty team. They just try to find ways to win. Three runs, four hits, one error for Texas A&M. And if you have eight seniors on your team, that better be your M.O. Two runs, four hits, and one error for LSU. For the second consecutive inning. Actually, for the fourth consecutive inning, LSU has a runner in scoring position. Rudity looking for a clutch base hit. She has bounced out to the first baseman. And she has a sacrifice bunt. She has hit safely in her last three games. Coming into this game, she's the leading hitter in this series for the Tigers. There, nope. That oh. drops in front of the center fielder. Petty had to be cautious before she left the bag. And the Tigers have runners at first and third as Rudity extends her hitting streak to four games. I thought it was a hit, then I thought it was gonna be caught. That dropped in front of Jasmine Hill by two or three steps. And the Tigers for the second straight inning have a golden opportunity to score. This is the second straight inning that LSU has had a runner at third with nobody out. Bergeron rams a liner to left. We've got a brand new ball game. Macy Bergeron moves her hitting streak to four games with an RBI single, and here come the Tigers. And here comes Coach Ford. We may have a change here, but the LSU got very aggressive in this inning. Two first pitch strikes for base hits. An infield hit by Petty. A single by Rudity, an RBI shout. 
We will see a lot of change-ups from Levitt. It's her second best pitch, and she is not afraid to throw it multiple times to a hitter. Gilio is the pinch runner at first base. She's behind Ruderdy. The 1-0 from Levitt. That's high off the catcher's glove. That's the second time. I think, I, I, I really believe she's losing the ball when they're showing the bunt. And yes, the pitch is high. That is a passed ball, and now the Tigers have runners at third and second. Look, it's coming from the sun to, to uh, the shade. I don't know if she's losing the ball. Well, that's the ninth passed ball. That's a lot by Cottrell. The Tigers have a chance to win this ball game right here in this inning. McKee slaps course, it off, foul off to the left side. Of course, Texas A&M has another at bat. Well, the Aggies thwarted LSU a couple of innings ago in a very similar situation. They cast ice on that rally. Let's see if LSU can redeem another chance. I don't know, you can only put your hand in the fire so often and not get burnt. Three and one, first base is open, nobody out. The go ahead run at third base. LSU has come from behind in the late innings in both of the previous games. The pitch from Levitt. Ooh. Wow. That is a very courageous take by McKee. And it results in ball four. It's a change up and from up here. Whew. For the Aggies, Shaley Ackerman. Drop ball is going to be her best pitch. You can see the other pitches that she throws. She's not necessarily a strikeout artist. No, but a good drop ball right here. That's what you want. Base is loaded. It's Newland at the plate. And late on that swing. Newland is the best among the Tigers in producing with runners in scoring position. She's hitting 472. That's number one on LSU. Newland's got to gear up and be ready for anything. The Aggies are hoping for some ground balls here so they can throw the ball to home and get that lead runner. Rudity, Gilio, and McKee on board. Saw and that change up. Ball hit very well to center field. That is up and over. You can pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. Allie Newland delivers a grand slam home run. It's her sixth round tripper of the year. And the Tigers, as they've done in every game, come from behind in the late innings. That was a four run swing. And what, my, what are my three letters for this young lady? MVP. <laughs> She's a Georgia girl, so it might be peanuts. She saw that change up and she just unloaded. That is Newland's second Grand Slam this year. It's the third Grand Slam by the Tigers. She had a Grand Slam her very first at bat for the Tigers. That as was a, a while freshman. Ago. Yeah. Here's Briggs. And she will have some stories to tell later on in life. And you know what? Allie, keep this for your kids. They're all true. Your mom is not lying. The 2-1 to Briggs. The Aggies have had the lead at least in the mid innings of every game. But LSU has come back. And right now with a five run performance in the sixth. A 7-3 lead for LSU, the first lead of the day. Well, the Aggies haven't really had 
an answer in the circle to answer when the Tigers start turning it on. Kennedy has thrown well. That's off the glove on a hop. And they may not be finished. Look at this hustle from Briggs. Wiggins could not feel that. That's going to be too hot to handle, I'm sure. That's a base hit for Briggs. That's her second of the day. And her hitting streak is now seven games. Here's Taylor Pleasance. She knows something about ending a game with a home run. She did it on Thursday in the eighth inning. Tell you, this Tiger team started the season off on fire. Cooled off a little bit in the middle. It looks like uh, trending back upwards again. 24 consecutive victories to start the season. Went on the road and the wheels kind of fell off. I'd say they're right back on though now. This Aggies team came to Baton Rouge red hot. Eight and one in SEC play after three weekends. The best start ever in SEC play for the Aggies. But LSU has knocked him off twice and leads by four here in the sixth. And hitting is contagious. It's also not contagious, but right now, no question. Everybody wants a bat right now. We quickly update you with LSU baseball against Arkansas. It's in the eighth inning in Fayetteville. Razorbacks seven, Tigers four. The 3 2 pitch. Let's update again. LSU has just scored. It's a 7 5 game. Arkansas leading in Fayetteville. That game is in the seventh. Earlier, the LSU women advanced to the Elite Eight in the NCAA Basketball Championship Tournament, 78-69 over UCLA. And it's looking like it could be another rematch with Iowa. That game was basically a one and two possession game for about 39 of the 40 minutes. Just Iowa like, is leading Colorado in the second game of the, the day's action in Albany. That's a fair ball. Here comes another run for LSU. Gutierrez bangs it off the glove of the first baseman. And everybody is going to gather in the middle of the field for Texas A&M. A&M's defense is going to call their own timeout. They are red hot right now. The crowd is excited. Got a five run lead right now. And six in the sixth for the Tigers. Still nobody out for Lynch. And Lynch has hit the ball well. That's a game ending run with her at the plate. The 2-0 to Lynch. Burns the outside edge for a strike. 
from Shaley Ackerman. Aggies have to be a little shell-shocked right now. They haven't been able to close out any game. Good play. Oh, she forgot. Oh, my gosh. Kennedy Powell stepped on the back, thinking it might be a force. Then she, she threw to home the home when base, there was no play there. She thought the bases were loaded. And she's patting her chest, saying, my fault. Oh, well, no joke. <laughs> It's oh going to be a gosh. fielder's choice. Oh my I think. gosh. Stepped on the bag. She thought she had a double play. This is about, that kind of tops it off for the Aggies a little bit. They played so well and then just inexplicably, they can't get an out and or they make a mental mistake. LSU will make Jaden Leno a pinch runner at first. Here's Petty. Still nobody out. This was a 3 0 game before the Tigers scored two in the bottom of the third. And it was still a 3-2 game going to the bottom of the sixth. Right now it's eight to three. It's amazing how close these two games have been last night and tonight. And then something happens and it gets blown wide open. Of course, the first game had to go extra innings. Walk off home run by Taylor Pleasance. LSU is close to doing what it has never done before, and that is sweep Texas A&M in softball. But still some work to be done, and there's ball four. Another run scores. Pleasant strolls across. Gutierrez moves up, so does Leno. As Petty gets the RBI on the bases loaded walk. Base hit right here and this game could be over. Texas A&M has not been run ruled this year. They've only lost five games. All by one run until this weekend. Well, actually six games, 28 and six. And you're right, the first five losses of those six were by one run. Here's Ruderty. Still nobody out. A strike on the outside corner. Check she swing went. and I think a strike, yes. She absolutely went. So Rudity fails to put it in play. Got a pinch hitter, I think. Is it a pinch hitter? No, it's Bergeron. Re-entry. Macy Bergeron had a big RBI single earlier in this inning. That base hit, and that really keyed this rally, or one of the hits that keyed it. Yep, opened up the game. And that uh, gave her a four-game hitting streak. That's a nice pitch on the inner side of the plate. We've seen some nice pitches from the staff, just not enough of them in, in at-bats. Nine to three, Tigers. It has all come in this inning, seven of it. Now you could have a double play. The out at first, no chance to get Bergeron at, the out at the plate rather, and no chance to get Bergeron at first. So a fielder's choice. Kinda, now McKee coming to the plate. Let's see, could she have touched third? 
but had to go back for it and throw home. Wanted to get that lead runner. Last place you really want the ball to be hit. Third base with runners, with the bases loaded with one out. Right now, two outs, a six run lead for LSU. A key waiting and lifts this one out of play. You know what? Burzon is in line to win all three games. Oh, wow. A sophomore All-American is earning her scholarship. And strangely as it seems, because Kennedy has thrown well most of the time in this series, she would be the pitcher of record on the losing oh, side. Oh, wow. That's true. Well, snap back throw. Did she get her? Oh, we call an obstruction. I think she called obstruction. The delayed dead ball signal was. There was an obstruction. <sighs> I'll tell you what, though, Aggie coaches. They will hold the runners at third, second, and first. And here we go. That's lined right to Harper, and the inning is over. But the Tigers got an RBI single by Bergeron. They got a grand, her sixth home run of the season, her second grand slam of the year. And now it's Jasmine Hill, strike one. I wonder if she likes muffaladas. Grand salami, ah, get it. Ah. For those of you out there, muffaladas is are that on the dollar New menu? Orleans, no, New Orleans um, delicacy. Pepperoni, salami, olive mix. I've never been a huge fan. Me, you know, I love olives, and I'm I'm the same way. I'm not a huge fan. Most Italian food, absolutely. Burzon came out throwing strikes, exactly what you want her to do in this situation to close it out for the Tigers. We'll get an update from Fayetteville for you, the LSU baseball score coming soon. Hello, souvenir. They've moved to the eighth inning. And the Razorbacks have a seven to five lead over LSU in search of a series sweep. The Tigers have a nine to three lead over the Aggies in the seventh, also in search of a series sweep. And if LSU obtains it a bit, it will be the first time in the history between these teams that LSU has swept the Aggies. Hard to do. Hard to beat one team three times. Especially in these days with so much scouting, so much, so many adjustments made, such good coaching, Jasmine everything Hill. on film. Hill grounds out and this brings on Eshte. She has struck out twice and bounced out. She has made a terrific running, leaping catch on the warning track in left field. She's had a good series. She has. Another hit. 
She had a couple of hits yesterday and drives this one through on the right side. Well, she came in today, the leading hitter for the Aggies. Probably will go home as the leading hitter for the Aggies on the weekend. Here's Julie Cottrell, who's 0 for 3. A fly out and a couple of ground outs. Ball one. You know, coming into today, the A&M has hit 245 on the weekend and then Tigers 204, but again, just some timely RBIs for the Tigers. Good looking rise ball just coming in on her hands. Moving through the zone with the late break. This is popped straight back and out of play. Swing and a miss. She chased one that was elevating. LSU's next action is April 2nd against ULM. We'll have it for you here at 6 o'clock. And you and I are doing that game. April 2nd, that's Tuesday. 6 o'clock Central Daylight Saving Time. Coco Woolley at the plate. Coco is one for three. Can she make that play? Oh. Maddox McKee ran as far as she could before her progress was stopped by the dugout railing. That ULA, ULM game on Tuesday here will be the only midweek game for the Tigers next week before they go to Florida on the 6th, 7th, and 8th. Tiger faithful standing for the third out. Pleasance whips it across, out on a close play. Throw back to third is not going to matter. And they're going to challenge. Oh, oh, they've overturned whoa, it. Okay. They have overturned it. And unfortunately, the umpire's microphone is not working. Right. It was working the first time, and since then, we've had malfunctions. Obviously, he's in communication with Birmingham. Now, are we going to get an addendum? Now they oh, say she's wait, out. Wait, wait. What is this? What is this? My goodness. I know there was probably obstruction. <laughs> it's not even funny, but. That, that's a good one. That, that, that's, 